so what happens, though, in a lot of cases, Young's modulus – oops, I seem to have jumped ahead a couple of slides. Excuse me. Let's back up here. When you look at real data, though, you'll notice that they're not always perfectly straight lines unless you're testing springs and metals. And we have two examples here of a single and a double layer film. And if we take Young's modulus, you can see on the screen – I think I can highlight it – right here that if I calculate the modulus, I get a curvature away from that straight line. And that's because polymeric materials have a viscous component. The other limit of behavior, if you want to think of this in kind of an Aristotelian way, is Newtonian behavior. And when you put a load on a, on a gash pot, which is basically a plate with a bunch of holes in it, you can think of one of those compression or French coffee pots, the speed at which the fluid goes through the hole increases with the strain rate. So if you plant plot stress versus strain rate, and rate is indicated here by the old notation of a little dot above it. I could have just used D strain DT. You get a line where the slope now is viscosity. And this is what we would do when we're testing a, an oil with a um, capillary tube or when we were testing something with a Brookfield um, spinning disc rheometer. These, this is the kind of number we would be getting. Now, the problem is, in the real world, most materials aren't purely Newtonian and aren't purely Hookian. Polymers especially are viscoelastic materials, and they're a little bit different. So if we drop a ball, for an example, we get a, a, the ball will bounce back a certain amount.